What is a cell? Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Darwin wrote uh, The Origin of Species in 1859, published it in 1859. He had an idea of the cell as being quite simple, correct? Yeah, everybody did. Yeah, okay. If, if he thought of the cell as being a Buick, what is the cell now in terms of its complexity by comparison? A galaxy. If Darwin thought a cell was, say, a mud hut, what do we now know that a cell is? More complicated than uh, a Saturn V. So what is in a cell as far as we know now? A world that Darwin never could have imagined. I needed someone who could give me a glimpse into this world. So we went to molecular biologist Doug Axe. Think of a cell as being a nano factory, a factory where on a very small scale, digital instructions are being used to make the components of the factory. Here we have the famous DNA double helix. You can see the two helical strands that are intertwined and wind around each other on the outside of the molecule. This is the material that stores all of our genetic information. In higher life forms, this will be the equivalent of something like a gigabyte of information stored in the molecules that form the individual chromosomes, all packed within the nucleus, which is a tiny fraction of the entire cell size. So what does DNA do? Well, the information in DNA ends up providing the information for sequencing the amino acids to make protein. So we have information in a one-dimensional form that provides the information for a three-dimensional form. I'm finally just beginning to grasp the complexity of the cell. Are there systems within the cell that go well beyond Darwinian evolution? Some type of cellular technology that drives adaptation, replication, quality control, and repair? What if these new mechanisms have massive design implications? Well, I say, so be it. The cell really is like nothing we've ever seen in the physical world. That's got to be firmly grasped. That's, that's, that's not something we can just say, oh, well, it's just a little bit more of the same old, same old. It's not the same old, same old. We are finding is that there's information that's in the cell that cannot be accounted for in terms of these undirected material causes. So there's, it has to uh, be. And, and so there's, there's yeah. some, some other, so there has to be an information source. So one of the key questions faced by modern biology is, where do you get information from? Well, uh, Darwin assumed that the increase in information comes from natural selection. But natural selection reduces genetic information. And we know this from all the genetic population studies that we have. And where is the new genetic information going to come from? Well, that's the big question. So when we find information in the DNA molecule, the most likely explanation is that it too had an intelligent source. I mean, we need engineering principles to understand these systems, okay? I mean, it's only because of our advancements in nanotechnology that we can even begin to appreciate these systems. But using intelligent design didn't seem to stop the scientists I spoke with, so why all the controversy? Suppose we find, simply as a matter of fact, that our scientific inquiries point in one direction. Which is that there is an intelligent creator. Why should we eliminate that from discussion? Streng verboten? How come? Why? Streng verboten. Very good. What does streng verboten mean? Strongly forbidden. Strongly forbidden. You've got two possible hypotheses. You've got a wall 
through the middle of your, through your brain, in effect, through your thinking, you say, well, you can't consider anything on this side of the wall. Only hypotheses on this side of the wall are permissible for consideration. What about academic freedom? I mean, can't we just talk about this? They, their reply is that science is not a democratic process. Oh, really? And that there is a consensus view. But wait and a minute, but, we are to subscribe to but the wait a second, but view. Darwin challenged the consensus view, and that's how we got Darwinism. 